Okay, how to choose a travel destination, a vacation, and all the different words that uh, come into this. Um, it's really a lot easier than you think if you don't try to <laughs> over, over uh, analyze this. Um, but generally, the way you decide on where to go is your friends at your friends, then your friends at work, uh, things that you're reading about, say you're reading books, uh, you're watching films, um, you're watching YouTube channels, and what you're following. Say you're following somebody on, uh, you know, TikTok or Instagram, and they're in a place all the time. So, how do you how you do it? I call it the summation theory. Okay, the summation theory is the sum of all the times you do something. So it's kind of simple but it's kind of hard to realize who you are sometimes i i have been traveling for so long that i go only where i want to go okay um on the other side i have to live somewhere so people often wonder why i'm in guatemala and i said i have to be somewhere and sometimes when i don't know what to do this is probably the most economical place i know on the planet to to park it. I can live for $200 a month in a hotel that's better than a $100 a night hotel in Miami. I can have a great view of the lake and I got no climate to deal with. I mean, the climate is always never ending spring. I'm on Lake Atalan right now. But I really am an adventure traveler, okay? So I want to risk, I want to rush. But we're going to have friends, we're going to read things, we're going to watch films, we're going to do YouTube. And if you took a diary and simply said, how many times did I watch something on Philippines? How many times did I watch something about uh, National Geographic on Africa? How many times do I watch things? And then you just started checking, listing it for maybe a couple months. Um, you might find that it's quite easy that you're always mentally going towards one place, okay? And that is the problem to me, okay? A lot of people, their friends and family are telling, basically their friends and families are the ones that make the choice on where they go, okay? Instead of uh, making the decision on what they like. I, I really respect Mom Graham. Mom Graham, uh, I brought her to Lake Atalan and it wasn't for, it wasn't for a vacation. It, well, it wasn't vacation. There's always too much or too little of something. She was having too many, too many thoughts about um, my father dying the year before in January. So I brought her here to, to Lake Atalan so she could change the channel so she wouldn't. So she had too many thoughts of that and she needed to think about something else. And she wanted to spend time with her son. So we spent three months together in Panachal, Guatemala. It's a great place for uh, people that have trouble walking and uh, kind of the physically handicapped. My mother had a trouble walking. She had a cane. And the reason why is the tuk-tuks, the little three-wheel trikes, three-wheel whatever, they're, they're not that high off the ground. They're only about seven inches off the ground. And she could stand up and get on a curb and get into one of these things. And we could go anywhere in Panachal. The hard part was finding a hotel. Okay, Most of the hotels are, are very dangerous here. But uh, she had too much thinking. Sometimes we have too much thinking or too little thinking. Okay, an executive, when I was working 16 hours a day, I went to Cancun and stayed in a resort and it was great. We sit by the swimming pool. I looked at girlfriends, girls, I mean not girlfriends. I, I met all these people. I could go on the beach. I had an absence of anything to do. And that to me is a vacation. Uh, the problem sometimes is people want to get their money's worth and that is a horrible reason to travel okay to get your money's worth is horrible okay because they're going to make a checklist of everything they're going to do every day and they're going to do it the checklist tourists are to me something to avoid i avoid them with all my mind little coffee here i'm having a very difficult time finding any place in lake atalan that is quiet enough to make a video I'm in a hotel right now. I'm not going to tell you hotels anymore, but the hotel is so uh, it's a wonderful hotel. I'm in a brand new house actually, but 
how do you do it? So summation theory, back to it. You're watching certain films. What do you watch films about? What do you watch YouTube about? Um, if you're reading a newsletter, what are you reading about? Is it only business? If it's only business, you might want to do some business trip. But we have things that we obsess about, like compulsively. Um, I, I compulsively think about exercise, okay? And I, I got a biohacking channel where I'm putting up a bunch of shorts all the time, little short videos, less than a minute. And I have probably more than that, I think about inventions. So I don't know. So probably to me, the greatest thing would be to go where Edison is or Tesla. Like I was in, I don't know, Serbia or someplace. And I went to a Tesla museum and uh, my heroes are, you know, like Benjamin Franklin, uh, Edison, uh, different people that invented and innovated things. But that's my hobby. So do you have any hobbies? Ask yourself seriously, do you have any hobbies? Is your only hobby thinking about money or going to work? And that is the problem, okay? A lot of you only think about going to work and buying things and things. And that, that is your hobby. So I, I was with a girl last year and her hobby was to buy things. Now she was absolutely in heaven in uh, Penn and Shell because they have all these like goodwill places or Salvation Army places. They call them pockets. A pocket is a place with a bundle. But she loved to buy. So she spent every day spending two or three hours buying things. And for $5 a day, she could buy all these little things. And she loved it. But what do you like to do? When you're bored, where do you go? That tells you what type of trip to take. The worst thing you can do is listen to your husband, wife, satyr, uh, workers, anything like that, because they're going to tell you where to go to brag. And this is a problem. Uh, travel is my primarily to not to go to the place, but to return home and tell everybody about it. And so many people choose places where they really hated, but they, they knew that they could brag about it. So they go to, on an all-inclusive tour or they go on a, a cruise ship or things that they think are acceptable to the public. And these people are ruling your life, okay? But there's things that you really want to do. Mom was really made me happy. She came here for three months, but then I was going to take her to the Holy Land to Israel. She kept, she always was talking about the Holy Lands because she went to church. She watched Shepherd's Channel every day. And about, I was really proud of her about one year before she died. She said, Andy, screw it. He said, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to the Holy Lands. I want to go to France. And I said, Mom, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Please. She finally said what she really wanted to do instead of what she wanted to look like. Right. She wanted to look like this holy person that went to the thing. And it's it's kind of sad, okay, because uh, a lot of people go on vacations just so that they can have an appearance of being uh, somebody that uh, they think is respected. You're so secure. Nobody cares, okay? Nobody cares where you go on vacation. <clears throat> They're going to criticize you. So sometimes I always laughed when I was in Acapulco, Mexico. I was in Piedra de Quest and we go to Acapulco and these guys would refuse to go watch the cliff divers, you know, the uh, uh, Presley, Elvis Presley diving thing. He had a movie in the 60s. I said, you got to go watch it. Why? Because every, when you get home, everybody's going to ask you if you watched it, if you came to Acapulco. And they go, but it, I said, it only takes 10 minutes. Come on, it's almost nothing. It's just easy. And at least you can say, I did it, so you don't have to deal with these guys' questions because they're going to say, why not? Um, if I go to, when somebody goes to Lake, uh, Guatemala, I say, did you go, I, I want to go, did you go to Tikal? Because Tikal is the number two archeology span site on the planet, in my opinion. Um, but there's a list of tourist destinations and <laughs> it's always funny, but what do your friends talk about? So you gotta be careful. What do your friends talk about as a vacation? Now the difference between a vacation a vacation is when you have too much of something, okay? And then you have too little of something means that you have nothing to think about. 
Um, as we get older, there's a lot of people who have nothing to think about, so they spend all their time watching the news. And this is not the thing to do. Okay, you got to choose what you're thinking about. And when they're watching the news, and it's kind of sad, it's kind of a, uh, a search for something angry problem in the United States. And this is, is too much, okay? You have to choose. I choose what videos. Like I, I just spent two hours learning about bioavailability. Bio most drugs that go in your body don't even get past the liver. Most vitamins don't get past your liver. And I'm thinking about how to how to put some turmeric on my skin. But that's another issue. Okay, but how to choose. You had too much or too little what? Too much of your wife, too much of your husband, too much of your family, too much of your job, too much of uh, the city you live in. Something to change the channel. Okay, when I say change the channel, I mean to get your brain to think about something else. Um, often, it's quite easy. All you got to do is put down that smartphone and maybe uh, throw it in a, in a, you know, take a vacation from your smartphone. I just had too much, for example, I had too much of San Pedro. I've been there for too long, waiting for my sister. She kept saying, she kept delaying, delaying. I said, Mom, I mean, Candy, I didn't plan on coming here to stay. I came here only to get my visa renewed for three months and then to move on to San Cristobal Las Casas. She said, the minute I arrived here, she said, she said, I'm coming. And I go, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't want to be here. There's way too many crazy expats here. I want to be around sane people. Not that that's easy to find in the expat community. But most expats are angry at the United States. That's why they left. I've realized that's why I love to go to Africa, because there's not people there because they hate the United States. Okay. I, I like to travel because I enjoy curiosity, but everybody has a different ringer. There's something rings in your head and um, sometimes maybe you're so angry that you ought to go to uh, Wall Street. I mean, if you're angry at the big business, go to Wall Street and see what's happening. There's different issues, but what is the reoccurring? Like when I'm with somebody, it's really easy. If I spent... I like to say the best way for the super rich to go on a tour would be to have me hang around with them for about two or three weeks until I discover what they talk about all the time. Are they talking about only women? Are they talking about being a normal person? And, and when you when I used to sell real estate, it was quite easy to you, you spend a, you spend a few hours with somebody and they start talking about they, what they really like, not what they think they should like. And this is a problem because there's two different Your subconscious will start giving you signals, giving people signals. So when I was a real estate broker, it was easy because you start looking at a house and, you know, the husband or wife would start saying the negative things about the house or the things they love. So I would sum up these things and I would pay attention, write them down, and I could create a profile of what they're interested in. But the same thing for travel. If you're around a person long enough, one of your friends could say, you could say to your, one of your friends, I could say to Jeff, Jeff, what do I talk about most? I could say to Rich, what do I talk about most? Rick, what do I talk about most? Uh, Candy, what do I talk about most? Okay. And one of the things I talk about most for most of my life was uh, probably uh, alcoholism and uh, not getting drunk. But the bigger deal was... Um, I always wanted to live without working, okay? And I I was a Henry David Thoreau person at age 15. And to me, this idea of working all the time just seemed like a waste of my life. And so I took off traveling when I realized I could live in uh, Mexico. I went to Mexico on vacation and I kept rummaging, rummaging around and I realized I could get a room for $10 a day $300 a month, and that was not much money to earn. I could go back to the United States. Like right now, I like to live where I'm insanely rich, okay? I always wanted to be insanely rich where I didn't have to think about money. Seems like a great thing. So Lake Athlon is a perfect place to not think about money. That's why you have a lot of Social Security disability people here. Probably 5 to 10% of the people here 
are on Social Security disability and they're insanely rich compared to the Guatemalans, which isn't much. I mean, 200 countries on the planet, it only takes about anything more than, okay, they earn about $30, about 84% of the people on the planet earn less than $30 a day. So when you're earning $30 uh, an hour or $20 an hour, you're insanely rich. And I'm insanely rich at only having $450 a month in Social Security. That's why I try to get people to not talk about praying for me. I had a guy confront me the other day on that. I was laughing at it. I said, I don't want people to pray for me to have money. <laughs> okay, that is the wrong thing to pray for. He says, praying for wants and praying for money is a desire. And I, I said, we should pray to be good people. Therefore, the benefit is we're going to have a good life. But <laughs> you're not going to buy... Uh, you're not going to get to pray for money and God's not going to answer your prayers. I think you're just way missing the point. Okay, but what, what you can do is talk to your friends and ask them, what do I talk about? Where do you think I would like to go? Now, the problem is they're going to say where they want to go. Okay, but you got to say, when, if you got a really good friend that listens to you and they don't talk, like I know that if, I ask most of my friends, they're going to start telling me where they want to go. And I go, I have no, no desire to go there. But what do I talk about? Okay, so there's some friends that actually listen and they can say, Andy, you talk about uh, living within your means a lot. I really talk a lot about living within my means because I had a business all my life. And the hardest thing to do in a business is get to a point where... <laughs> You have such a surplus of money that you don't have to stress all the time. And so it's very important that I have financial stability, live within my means. That's the biggest place. So I don't really like to go to Europe because it's like not living in my means. Right now, I'd love to travel around the United States and stay in people's guest rooms. On the other side is I don't want to live with people that are insane. <laughs> okay, so it's really hard to know which ones are insane. I'm kind of thinking people that go to church and at least are respectful of religions and they read books. If they read books and not just watching YouTube, they're probably saying, okay, if they're only watching YouTube, I'm probably not wanting to see it. That means they're not, um, they're not choosing what the subject is. YouTube serves up what you want, but I want to travel the United States, but it's too expensive. So it doesn't make me happy. Who wants to be a poor person? But a lot of people are on vacations because they want to be rich for two weeks or one week. And that's a really good thing. And that, that's nothing wrong with that. Let's be rich for, for things. You're working 40 hours a week and you want to be rich. Where can you feel rich? Like Cancun, Mexico is a great place to go stand, spend seven nights, eight days or whatever, eight days, seven nights in Cancun in a resort and feel like the rich and famous. And then, if you do go to Cancun, make a tour of all these swimming pools. We used to go to Acapulco. Acapulco used to be the rich and famous place in the 1950s, like 55. People bought condos there everywhere. Now they're buying condos in Huatuco, Mexico, which are nothing compared to Acapulco. Acapulco is one of the most beautiful places on the planet. Uh, the Cayuca is by far the, one of the most exotic, uh, rich and famous places on the planet. But people want to be famous for a week, which means how do you be famous for a week? And this is why I keep, I, I sometimes offer consulting. I say, all you got to do is start, we got to start having a conversation, just idle conversations. And then I can't listen to you. Tell me what you want. I got to hear what you talk about. Okay. And after I hear what you talk about for a while, I kind of know what you like to do. A lot of people are going on medical, medical tourism because they're so afraid of dying. Nothing wrong. Every, everything's got their point, like um, how to get your teeth done. You can go, what's funny is right now you can get a trip to, uh, you, can, you can get a 200, say $300 round trip from the United States to Guatemala and come get your teeth clean, fixed, redone at uh, one twentieth the price of the United States. Okay, I know a lot of you don't have insurance for your teeth. And uh, I was just thinking about getting my teeth done yesterday and I think it cost $31 to clean my teeth but there's many reasons but what do you dream about what do you think about what do you have too much of too little of? do you have too much time and you want something to think about do you have too little time 
or all you're doing is trying to avoid getting hurt. A lot of people, all they want to do is be comfortable. There's nothing wrong with anything in a way. The prime directive of travel is to enjoy yourself. But how do you enjoy yourself? Are you worried? What are you worried about? What do you think about? Um, a lot of people that are uh, very poor are the ones that need to take the vacations the most. There's no reason you have to come abroad. I was just trying to figure out the top 10, 20 destinations in the United States. I know for sure that if I was in the United States, going to Alaska or Hawaii, my, my parents both went to Alaska and Hawaii. These are the go home and tell your friends, brag that it was a great place to go, right? I have been to Hawaii. I've never been to Alaska. I keep thinking, why would I go freeze my butt off? But I, I hear it's radically beautiful, okay? And radical beauty is really good shared. I don't go to radically beautiful places because I don't want to go there and be lonely. Uh, a lot of people, I search for uh, places where I can meet uh, women. I want to go to a place, that's one reason I go to Togo, West Africa. It's just full of highly, highly, highly intelligent women. Not highly educated, but highly intelligent. And they're very beautiful and they're very friendly and they're, um, they're easy to date. There's nothing to do with, um, there's nothing to do with like Thailand or Philippines where guys are buying women or Sasua Dominican Republic or uh, Medellin, Colombia or Havana, Cuba. These are places where men buy girls. And I don't want to talk about those things because they are, the, those kind of, the great thing about those places is the infrastructure is 10 times better and people that are traveling for girls are, are traveling in a lot of ways for the right reasons. They're following, traveling for love and they're traveling for fun and they're not traveling to uh, save the world. I mean, if you're going to go be a poverty thing, a lot of, a lot of missionary groups come to Lake Atalan just to, uh, they're poverty tourism, okay? They think they're going to go save it. We're coming, a bunch of Christians come to a highly, a place that is more Christian than they're where they're living and they're coming to Guatemala. It's kind of a mixture, right? You're going, what's going on? Where's the disconnect? But there's many reasons, but going and saving the world is not a very good reason to travel. Um, very difficult to do anything to actually help another person other than spending money. Spending money allows them to earn money and better their their station in life. But back to your friends. So you got your friends, you got your movies, you got your things you read about. Like I've read, like, I don't know, 10 books by Wilbur Smith, okay? Wilbur Smith writes about South Africa. So I'm always dreaming about South Africa, and I'm dreaming about the Dutch and the British and, you know, big game hunting and things like that. I don't want to go hunting. I don't like to shoot guns. But uh, I... I would like to go to a place that's quiet. Right now, I'm, I've got, I need a vacation, I have too much. I had too much of San Pedro, so I came to Panama Shell for like three days, and I'm helping a, an older woman buy some plane tickets and a cruise ship thing across. She's using a cruise ship to cross the ocean to Spain. Kind of interesting. But uh, I'm helping her, and I like to help people to achieve their goals. That makes me feel good because what I give, when I give something, I get twice back in return. And, but I needed a vacation. So I just came here to take, spend a couple of nights for a vacation. I just was telling the guy, Kevin, to take a, why don't you take a vacation over to San Pedro for a couple of nights? He goes, why? Because you're kind of frustrated here, okay? I said, when you're frustrated and you don't know why, go change the channel. So that's what a trip is. It's changing the channel. And what do you got too little of or too much of? You got too little of love. Too, middle, too much of love, too much of family, too much of anything. What do you have too much of? What do you have too little of? Uh, but there is a point where overstimulation is a very big problem right now because of the smartphone. The smartphone has made people really frustrated and angry. If you're spending all your time on social networks, whether I, I've, I have no idea what to do on Twitter or X. I have no idea. I've been on there many times. I've tweeted many times. I can see no value to the thing. It's so, it's like random chaos, right? And I'm going, I could go check out 
Bill Gates's Gates Notes. That's about it. I check out Seth Godin's. I like to read newsletters. I constantly find somebody that I respect that I read their newsletters. And I like to watch, and then maybe if they give me a video. So I like a two hour video on something. Okay, today I was watching bioavailability because the body, all these vitamins you take, almost none of it goes through the liver. It doesn't get even through the stomach. But everything that comes in through your lungs, hey, you ever think about that? Your, your stomach's made to stop things from entering your body. And everybody wants to eat GMO. I mean, they want to eat organic. What about the air you breathe? <laughs> okay, the air you breathe is 10 times more. And, and our, our lungs are not set up to uh, deal with pollution. I'm always thinking those guys in California and New York, you know, East Coast, West Coast, they're breathing too much carbon monoxide. Okay, so we're gonna keep focusing. What films do you watch? What videos do you watch? What is the sum total of everything you watch? What are the things you talk about? When you open your mouth, that, see, what we talk about is what we really want to do. What we do is what we do, okay, who we are. So you might say, some people are always talking and pander, pandering to the audience. And then um, I was thinking that uh, my friend Debbie, she uh, goes to work out all the time. And does she know that there's a yoga retreats all over the place, right? There's yoga retreats, which is a healthy thing. I, I would like to go to a place where everybody was maybe like Muscle Beach, right? Because, man, it would be hard to, hard to get fat in Muscle Beach when you're looking at everybody going, I think it's in California, and yeah, everybody's working out. Maybe I should go to one of them women's bodybuilding things. That sounds like fun. But I like to go where writers live. I've been to many, many places where writers, uh, writers have written books. I've been in uh, Haiti where uh, the Graham Greene wrote a book. I was in uh, Tangier where one of those beat boys, the beat generation guys wrote uh, something. I was in uh, Rene Descartes' place in, uh, near Tours, France. I like to go to places where people have written books. I was going to go to Medford. Uh, well, I was going to go to um, Walden Pond. I've been there already, but I would like to go to Walden Pond again to see where Henry David Thoreau wrote his book. But Medford, uh, Massachusetts is where Paul Thoreau uh, was born. And uh, Paul Thoreau also lived in uh, Hawaii. He wrote like the, um, the Dark Star Safari. But he wrote a bunch of travel books. He's not a travel writer. He's a writer that He's a writer that travels. I'm a, I'm a writer and a video person that travels. I'm not trying to write about travel destinations. A, a travel writer is somebody that writes a, a travel writer or a tra travel video journalist normally writes up a commercial. They're, they're making commercials to try to get you to do it so that they can get paid advertising. Um, advertising um, distorts the truth. It's really a problem, okay? Okay. Um, let me think there's, I should say that there's different types of things. You can, uh, you can, uh, avoid work. You can avoid the weather. You can go to places where you can eat and drink like France, or you can go for love. You got extreme travel, which is, um, extreme travel is like when I went to Iraq or when I went to, uh, the uncontacted tribes. This is where you, you're the only one to go. You can't talk anybody into going extreme travel. Adventure travel is like Fred at uh, Fast Fred's. He, he's going on um, river rafting. That's adventure. Adventure travel is when the possibility of dying is possible. Climbing up at a mountain, walking there is not really dangerous. But when you actually could die, that's adventure traveling. And then you got history travel. You got religious travel. Um, you got different themes for travel. But... Uh, um, how to know what you like. Go into a library and find the books that you the books that you go pick up. When you walk into the magazine section, what magazine articles are you reading? There's all these signals that tells who you are. And they will make you happy when you go on a trip that is really what you want to do, not what your family wants you to do, not what your friends want you to do. But the one great way is to always go visit friends. Okay, so I, I had a social network where I was trying to get people of like ilk to get together. 
And a lot of these people met all of it. It's one of the extremely great success at getting two angry people together, okay? <laughs> or two dog lovers or two whatever. I always, I really would like to go back to, uh, I'm going to, uh, I just realized today that bioavailability, uh, one reason we, why we have, uh, I'm, a big, I'm a big health addict. One of the reasons why we um, have um, sea salt, like Himalaya sea salt, is because in the sea salt, there's a lot more minerals. And one of the problems in the United States is the soil has been um, depleted of minerals. And I'm going to start going to the beach like one month every, say every three months. And why? I'm going to go in the water and through the transdermal process, I'm going to take in all the minerals into my skin. Because I think the best way to receive minerals and vitamins is through the skin. I put a lot of cod liver oil, olive oil, and castor oil, and um, I'm going to put all sorts of different types of oil all over my skin and take a shower. I did this when I was in Huatuka last year. I put coconut oil, just, just coat my body. And it made me feel really good. Right now I'm feeling really good because I got a combination of lymph gland massage and whatever. But I'm a health, I'm a health freak. Why? I'm 65 plus and I, I need to live forever. I need to keep the brain working most of all. But we need a vacation from too much and too little. Too little stimulation, too much stimulation. But you should never, ever take a trip because your friends want you to go there or your wife or your husband. You gotta go where you dream about. I always was happy with mom. I, I always believed that if I could have got mom Graham to France, she would have had her five more years to live. Why? You gotta have a story to tell, a reason for, for living. The, the stories we tell are what extend our life. If we have something to anticipate, if we have nothing to anticipate in the future, we're waiting to die. So stop waiting to die and try to anticipate. A lot of you would, would like to go live abroad. I don't want people to live abroad. I'm, I'm starting to realize that living abroad is a very horrible thing for people because a lot of the people that live abroad, majority of them, about 85%, are angry at the country they left. So you, you're going right into dysfunction junction. Traveling and roaming the planet, yeah, that's a good idea. Living in two, two months or three months in different locations, wonderful thing. Actually going and moving to another country and living is insanity, okay? That's why I keep moving because after I get too full of these crazy people, I, I left because of two different reasons. Um, I, I, I was watching Greta Darling read one of my Tom Clancy books, like a thousand books or my James, might have been Michael Crichton. She spoke Norwegian, but she read a book in English. I said, this is the type of person I want to hang around. With. And then the other one is like, I'm just unbelievable. I could stop. I said, I could work one day and live a week, one day and live a week, one day and live a week. And I realized that I could make money from the internet and have the fountain of never ending money. And I've done that for 25 years. I've been a remote worker. Well, not really. I, I had uh, self-employed. My business was uh, my website, and I made money. Okay, I hope that's helpful. Uh, but when you have too much or too little, what do you have too much or too little of? And then what are you obsessing on all the time? What are you thinking about all the time? Are you thinking about girls? Are you thinking about, I mean, nothing wrong with, I mean, I get really angry when somebody tells me not to think about women. I said, I'm a single man. I would like to get married and have two kids. I would love to uh, have a life, a kind of semi-normal life, okay? Love is the most natural thing on the planet. Anybody that gets angry at you for thinking about love um, is traumatized because they failed at love, okay? Don't, don't listen to the divorced people, they failed, okay? Listen only to the successful people on love. Love is a very great thing. Uh, curiosity is the world's greatest thing. Um, serendipitous travel, I love serendipitous travel. That means I get on a, I get on a, uh, this is what I've done all over the place. I did it all over Guatemala, I did it all over India, I do it in Africa. 
I get on a bus and when I see a place that looks like a good place to stop, I get off and stay for a few days. I love this kind of travel because every day is a new day and every day is a new day. Anticipation of the future, that's the fountain of youth. Okay, hit that subscribe button. You're supposed to hit that subscribe button. I'm supposed to tell you, let's see, hit that little bell that says get a notification. But I'm here and you're not, why not? Because I follow my dreams. Follow your dreams. Follow what you obsess on. But if you change the channel off that negative crap, <laughs> there's, there's always going to be negative crap. Never ending. There's, think of the future. Write a, write a story of your life, then go live it.